Some people still think that kids are angels sent to us from on high. That their innocent spirits and lack of selfishness can help us find our way to a better world. They can melt the hearts of even the hardest people with their kind. Selfless deeds and kind words. Unfortunately. Though. These celestial beings do occasionally leave us too soon. Here we get into a story about a woman named Ruth who looks at a bath mat and has no idea the deep emotional trip that is about to happen to her. A bath mat may not mean much to some people. However. For Ruth. It represents the limitless love she has for her son Nolan. As he battled soft tissue sarcoma. Nolan's fear of abandonment caused him to cling desperately to his mother. He started off innocently. With a little stuffy nose, something most people would have ignored if it hadn't been for his travels. Nevertheless. A devastating prognosis was quickly revealed. Despite a trip to the hospital for antibiotics and saline. Nolan's parents were left feeling worse after just one night of illness. A tonsillectomy was necessary after Nolan's adenoids swelled. But more tests revealed the terrible truth, rhabdomyosarcoma. A vicious enemy wreaking havoc on his youth. Radiation. Chemotherapy. And other unpleasant procedures were part of the months-long fight against the cancer. In the midst of all the tubes and medical equipment, Nolan's infectious smile became a symbol of his strength. And his loving parents documented his story on a Facebook page. But as the cancer refused to go away despite treatment, hope began to fade. Ruth and her husband were forced to face the unimaginable, disclosing Nolan's condition to their cherished son, after the oncologist's bleak prognosis shattered any remaining hope. Ruth softly brought up the matter, hoping for comfort for her sick kid. But Nolan met her with unfaltering bravery and acceptance. His confession of suffering, coupled with his promise to keep going for her, cut deep into her soul. His harsh comments broke Ruth's heart into a million pieces. Softly she whispered, My darling, I can't stand to watch you go through this anymore. Beyond the curtain of heaven is where you will find healing. Ruth was moved to tears by Nolan's calm acceptance of his destiny. All right. Mommy, he said with a tone that belied his anxiety. I'll venture to heaven and await your and daddy's arrival. Playing amongst the stars until then. Though moved by Nolan's story, the community's prayers went unanswered. Nolan left behind sick parents who were unprepared for the pain of their loss on February 4, 2017. The day he said goodbye to this mortal coil in order to prepare the family for their last moments together. The medical personnel at the hospital stopped all therapies. Still, Nolan's tone changed dramatically as he reassured his mother of his bravery and requested they stay. Ruth stayed at Nolan's side for hours, she momentarily separated but was quickly drawn back as his oxygen levels dropped precipitously, sending him into a terrifying sleep. Ruth lay by her son in astonishment. But she saw a miracle revival of brain activity that ended with Nolan's last expression of love. After Nolan passed away, Ruth vented her deep sorrow on social media, bemoaning the empty spot where her son had once rested on the bath mat. There are no adequate words to express the depth of a mother's pain at this kind of loss. Solace is found in Nolan's radiant grin and parting words, which will remain etched in Ruth's heart until they are reunited in heaven. Listen up. My friends, life is short. So savor the time you have with the people you care about most. Until we meet again. Keep them close. After watching the first story above. Do you have any thoughts? Feel free to share your opinions in the comments section. Next. Let's watch another similar story. Surprising everyone.
a nurse committed an unexpected act while attending to a dying two-year-old girl, which she attempted to conceal until the girl's mother exposed her by capturing a photograph. The narrative commences on March 19, 2015. After completing 38 weeks of gestation, Shelby, a teacher on the brink of motherhood, found herself in the bathroom when her water unexpectedly broke. Her husband, Jonathan, had already left for the gym earlier that morning, prompting them to rendezvous at the hospital by 8 a.m. Upon arrival, Shelby sensed something amiss. Although her contractions were manageable, excruciating pain in her lower back hindered her mobility. By 30 past 5 p.m., when it was time to push, the source of Shelby's agony became apparent. Her baby was lodged in a posterior position, with her face up instead of down, causing her shoulders to become ensnared in Shelby's pelvis. Exhausted, Shelby was advised by the doctors to exert one final push. If her baby failed to emerge, she would undergo a cesarean section. Thankfully, the last effort bore fruit, delivering six pound of joy in the form of Sophie. Sophie embodied all her parents' hopes and more, described by her mother as spirited, inquisitive, and fiercely independent. Sophie brought boundless excitement to her family of three, residing in Dallas. However, their idyllic life took a tumultuous turn two years after Sophie's birth. May 16, 2017, marked the final night of normalcy in their household. On a serene evening, the family joyfully assembled the pink princess tent Sophie had received for her birthday. After frolicking inside together, they retired for the night. Unaware of the impending turmoil, the following day, Shelby embarked on a field trip with her third grade students, returning home eager to engage in playtime with her daughter. However, upon entering Sophie's room, she was greeted by the distressing sight of a two-year-old struggling to breathe. Without hesitation, Shelby and Jonathan whisked their daughter to the um where they were promptly redirected to the Children's Medical Center Dallas. After hours of agonizing waiting and numerous tests, the doctors delivered the devastating news, a sizable mass, resembling a softball, was discovered in Sophie's chest, an unequivocal diagnosis of cancer. Albeit the specific type remained unknown. Our life ceased to exist in its former state, Shelby said in that critical care unit. Capturing their new reality, small concerns were overshadowed by larger ones. Work lost its significance. Our little one's fight with illness consumed us, destroying all hope for the future we had held dear. Malignancy affecting immature cells, important parts of the immune system, Sophie's diagnosis was an aggressive form of T-cell lymphoblastic lymphoma. Following that, Sophie and her parents became regulars in the hospital, where Sophie endured 12 weeks of chemotherapy and multiple bouts of fever. Sophie required admission to the intensive care unit and mechanical ventilation by August the 8th due to her rapidly worsening condition. Sophie showed no improvement after 15 days of intense chemotherapy, trapping her parents in the terrible cycle of seeing their daughter suffer needlessly. Shelby and Jonathan, despite their helplessness, held fast to prayer and hope, hoping for divine intervention to ease the pain of chemotherapy and its adverse effects. Sophie lost the ability to eat, walk, talk, and use her hands independently as a result of the severe chemotherapy that followed. 
This prompted Sophie's family to begin a four-month program of neurological rehabilitation in an effort to get her ready for a stem cell transplant. Shelby and her husband found unexpected support from the physicians, nurses, and other medical staff who were like family to them during this difficult time. The 28 years old educator praised nurses, who are often overlooked, for their constant support, and said that they are the unsung heroes of every hospital success story. Nurses, in Shelby's view, do more than just help doctors or give patients medicine, they give their lives for 12 hours straight to care for the sick. While Shelby was up all night worrying, she finally found relief in writing. At 3 in the morning, while sitting on the hard hospital couch, she started recording the innumerable ways the nurses looked after her daughter and the other patients. Shelby, moved by her daughter Sophie's strength and courage, established a Facebook page under the title, Sophie the Brave, to document her daughter's cancer journey thank the medical professionals who have helped her, and share updates with others. In a heartfelt letter posted on the page, Shelby singled out a nurse who covertly concealed her emotional investment in Sophie's well-being. I see you, Shelby wrote, acknowledging the nurse's efforts to comfort Sophie amidst her struggles. She recounted moments when the nurse provided invaluable support including consoling her during panic attacks and capturing precious memories with Sophie through photos and videos. Although Shelby recognized that caring for patients was part of the nurse's job, she regarded them as superheroes whose actions were truly extraordinary. She applauded their ability to multitask seamlessly, carrying loads of medication while attending to multiple patients all while their phones incessantly rang with calls from other wards. In Shelby's eyes, these nurses not only treated Sophie like their own daughter, but also exemplified the essence of compassion and dedication that defined their profession. There have been more than 30,000 shares of the post. On December the 20th, Jonathan and Shelby got some good news, they were clear to start the battery of testing that Sophie's stem cell transplant process requires. A flicker of optimism returned to the parents, maybe this time they would be able to bring their daughter home. This hopeful moment, unfortunately, was short-lived. The cancer had returned to Sophie by 3 o'clock on the 22nd of December. It was tragic news that her cancer had progressed to a fatal stage according to the doctor. Upon seeing the doctor enter, Shelby knew, his solemn expression revealed the harsh truth. Before entering the room to deliver the devastating report, the pediatric stem cell specialist's face was stained with tears. Shelby described how the cancer had metastasized, penetrating Sophie's right side of the heart as well as her bone marrow. Spinal fluid, and chest cavity. After receiving a fatal diagnosis, most people are given one to six months to spend with their loved ones. However, Jonathan and Shelby were informed that they would only have days, if not hours, left with their daughter. They prioritized Sophie's comfort over continuing chemotherapy, which would have worsened her discomfort and overwhelmed her delicate body. No matter how much cognitive function she had left, doctors warned that more chemotherapy would probably destroy it. Jonathan and Shelby committed themselves to savoring every minute with their daughter Sophie, hoping that her remaining time on Earth would be filled with joy. In the days that followed, they surrounded her with love while reading aloud, singing songs, watching movies, and generally spoiling her. Sophie died away quietly on January the 4th. With her parents holding her close, they went through indescribable pain. But at least Sophie had joyous, loved ones at her side in her last days. 
throughout her 243 days of illness. Sophie was bedridden for eight months. She was only here for a total of two years, nine months, and 16 days, which is quite brief. Despite her untimely passing, her parents have decided to celebrate her life every year. The memory of Sophie would last a lifetime. Her mother's touching tribute to her daughter included having her place to rest in shoe that provided her delight throughout her life. Connie came into this world a little under two years after Sophie died. Reminiscing about his sister's time spent receiving treatment at the same hospital. Shelby remarked. When I cradled him for the first time. It was one of the most precious moments of my life. The shape of Connie's nose and mouth reminds me of Sophie's. Yet he has his own distinct personality. Shelby experienced a sense of completeness when she held Connie close to her heart. However, it was tempered by the constant pain of Sophie's absence. They were comforted to some extent by Connie. But he couldn't take the place of Sophie who had passed away. After watching this story above, do you have any thoughts? Feel free to share your opinions in the comments section. Next, let's watch another similar story. Upon receiving the heart-wrenching news of his daughter's untimely demise, a father's instinct propelled him urgently to the mortuary, seeking one last embrace. Yet, amidst the sorrow, a startling interruption ensued unfolding a sequence of events that would defy belief. Howard's pocket erupted with the shrill buzz of his phone. An unfamiliar number flashing on the screen. Tentatively. He answered. Greeted by a somber voice confirming his identity as Mr. Howard Bennett. Officer Martinez. Representing the Los Angeles Police Department relayed the regrettable tidings of a tragic accident involving his beloved daughter. Constant. In that harrowing moment, the ground seemed to vanish beneath Howard's feet. His inquiry trembling with raw fear, clutching the phone as if it were a lifeline to his daughter's essence. He awaited confirmation of her fate. The ensuing silence spoke volumes. A poignant prelude to the devastating news delivered by the officer. With a heavy heart, Officer Martinez disclosed Constance's fatal outcome, urging Howard's immediate presence at West Los Angeles Hospital. The journey blurred by flashing lights. Howard navigated through familiar streets in a daze. His mind consumed by a singular purpose. Arriving at the hospital, Howard was met by a stoic nurse. His plea to see his daughter barely audible through a constricted throat. Sensing the gravity of the situation, the nurse guided him through labyrinthine corridors with practiced efficiency, minimizing interference in the delicate dance of grief. Entering the sterile room, Howard's breath caught in his chest at the sight before him. Serene yet lifeless, constant lay upon the cold table, a stark juxtaposition to her once vibrant spirit. Overwhelmed by a flood of emotions, Howard approached her with trembling steps, his whispered apology echoing in the sterile silence. With his voice barely audible through his weeping, he muttered, Daddy's here now. His hand shook violently when he extended it to touch her. He felt an overwhelming sense of guilt for being gone when she needed him the most. Howard remained for an eternity by Constance's lifeless body, engulfed in the stifling stillness of the mortuary. The silence was broken only by the erratic rhythm of his breath as his words reverberated with eternal love. Every proclamation was an aimless endeavor to traverse the abyss of loss, to communicate to her the profundity of his love. Howard was in the middle of his mourning when he noticed Constance's hand trembling slightly. In the midst of battling hope and reason, 
His heart became paralyzed with doubt. Was it just the beginning of rigor mortis? Or was there some life still clinging to her? Incredulous. He persisted in speaking. His voice quivering with excitement. Another intentional tremor. This time more powerful. As if rejecting the limits of life. Appeared. As he grappled with the profound truth that lay before him. Howard's world teetered on the edge of unbelief. Howard mustered all his strength and pushed the call button. His desperate cry breaking the stillness like a ray of sunshine. Desperation gushed out of Howard as the nurse rushed to his side. Her expression betraying her disbelief. Declaring. I saw her hand move twice, he pleaded for validation with his comments. The nurse's initial doubts about Constance's vitals turned into outright shock as she confirmed them. In a bizarre turn of events. As Howard kept his jaw agape. Staring at his daughter's face for any indication of life. His heart raced. Then. Out of the dead silence came a surprising revelation, a faint pulse. A whisper of life. The nurse's eyes widened in shock when she saw it, a glimmer of hope amid the sorrow. She quickly grabbed the phone and dialed for help. With their quick, coordinated motions, the medical staff rushed into the room, leaving Howard motionless. Surprisingly, his daughter, whom he had grieved for, was still alive. Then came the news that ignited a whirlwind of emotions within him. A stern-faced woman, her sharp eyes betraying no hint of emotion, pulled Howard aside. Mr. Bennett. There's been a terrible mistake, she declared matter of fact. She went on to explain that Constant was not deceased, but in a deep coma. Awaiting confirmation of her heartbeat by specialists. Relief flooded Howard's senses, followed by uncontrollable tears of gratitude and disbelief. But soon, anger surged within him like a dormant volcano awakened. How could such a grave error occur? His voice trembled with fury as he demanded answers, his emotions spiraling out of control. Yet, the doctors remained stoic. Offering explanations of a mix-up with the accident scene paperwork, but little else. Determined to unravel the truth. Howard spent the ensuing weeks by Constance's bedside. Her unresponsive form a stark reminder of the hospital's negligence. During his vigil, a young nurse who frequented the late shift became his confidant. Offering solace and support in his darkest hours. It seemed only fitting that she, in a clandestine act of kindness, broke the news of Constance's true condition. But this revelation unearthed a troubling pattern within the hospital, misdiagnosis, improper treatments, and the premature declaration of death. The pressure mounted within Howard. Yet he maintained a facade of composure. Armed with access to his daughter's medical records, he embarked on a crusade for justice. The next morning, Howard confronted hospital staff and reached out to other affected families, gathering evidence of the institution's lack of care. With copies of Constance's medical files in hand, he vowed that someone would be held accountable for this egregious mistake. Howard noted an alarming trend of neglect at the hospital, particularly stemming from one physician, Dr. Thompson. As he engaged with legal representatives to procure and contest further records, leveraging his established rapport within the hospital, he discreetly documented conversations with the staff. Through this, he uncovered a string of malpractice lawsuits. Most settled out of court. Three cases bore striking resemblance to Constance's situation. It became evident to Howard that Dr. 
Thompson posed a significant risk to patients, endangering lives over the years. Despite the lawsuits and patient grievances, the hospital persisted in retaining him. Fueled by anger and determination, Howard sought justice, presenting his findings to the hospital board in a bid for accountability. The meetings were fraught with tension as hospital lawyers attempted to downplay the severity of the situation. Howard remained steadfast, framing it not as isolated errors but as a systemic failure to safeguard patients. Under mounting pressure from his own legal counsel, further incriminating evidence against DR. Thompson emerged, prompting the hospital to intensify efforts to thwart Howard. Amidst threatening phone calls and vandalism, Howard persisted, refusing to be deterred by the intimidation tactics. His resolve only strengthened, leading him to plan a press conference to disclose his findings to the public. However, an ominous message, accompanied by a photo of Constant in her hospital bed, shook him to the core. Since learning of the hospital's failings, Howard had endeavored to relocate Constant to another facility, but medical experts deemed her too frail to endure the transfer. Despite setbacks and personal threats, Howard remained resolute. He refused to let fear dictate his actions, determined to shed light on the truth, even if it meant facing formidable opposition from the hospital and potentially risking his own safety. Howard was unfazed and continued with the news conference despite the fact that Constance's life was in danger. After all, he wondered, what on earth could they do? subject his daughter to national attention and cause harm. Not likely. Still, he was asked to a private conference with the hospital board of directors the following day. Upon entering the room, he was greeted by icy reception and expressionless looks. In their terms, the board demanded that Howard desist from what they deemed as harassment of the hospital and its employees. And in exchange, they offered Constant a large compensation to ensure her future. Howard looked at them with disbelief. Apology for potentially fatal mistakes should not be thrown under the rug in order to maintain a perfect reputation, rather. It should be a focal point of the healing process. It felt like the board was putting the institution's prestige ahead of the victim's right to justice. Howard was unmoved by the line. He might have taken the easy way out and accepted the compensation. But he couldn't turn a blind eye to the suffering of other families or the danger that lurked in the shadows caused by the hospital's unregulated activities. When Howard turned down the offer, he made it plain that the patients at risk from the hospital's dubious actions were more important than he and Constant. Everyone in the boardroom could feel the tension, they had failed to anticipate Howard's determination. He went from being an involved dad to a passionate supporter of reform. No matter the cost to himself, Howard swore when he left the meeting to keep fighting. As time went on, Howard's cause became more prominent. He painstakingly documented the testimonies of individuals who had suffered as a result of the hospital's incompetence and then sent them to his legal team. At the appropriate moment, criminal complaints would be filed, which were visible in the distance. At the same time, there was reason to be hopeful because Constance's condition started to improve and she started to come out of her coma. After a few days, Constance's condition steadily improved, and her awareness returned at a rapid pace. After Constant regained consciousness, two days later, Howard convened with his own neurological team to discuss how to best care for her. The news they were going to disclose was completely unexpected, and nothing could have prepared him. Dr. Patel 
a modest guy with spectacles reminiscent of John Lennon, was in charge of the group. They had found Constance's underlying condition, a rare sort of undiagnosed aneurysm, and he notified Howard of this. Howard felt a sinking feeling in his gut as Dr. Patel described how the ailment may have been deadly in a year or perhaps sooner if they hadn't found it now. Despite initial fears that the aneurysm might burst, the accident's force only moved it to a more visible area of the brain. The good news is that it was curable once it was found. A major change happened in Howard's world when this information was revealed. Problems Investigations and conflicts with the hospital administration had defined the previous several months. Suddenly, it appeared as though Constance's life had been miraculously spared by the accident. It was a watershed moment. While Howard was still trying to take it all in, his attorney's phone rang. Even though they were ready to argue their case, they did have an idea. The goal of submitting a list of demands to the board was to anticipate the defensive strategies that the hospital would employ. There was a good chance that the case would turn into a drawn-out legal struggle if they couldn't win the lawsuit outright. They were hoping to force institutional improvements. They thought this was the greatest way to ensure victory for all parties involved. Once Howard gave his approval, the lawyers would take care of the rest. Howard decided in a matter of seconds. Seeking vengeance felt out of place after the miraculous events that had transpired, his daughter awakening and a hidden life-threatening disease being uncovered in time for treatment. Hearings about the possible revocation of Dr. Thompson's license loomed on the horizon two weeks after he found himself suspended and subject to legal ramifications. As part of an extensive evaluation of the hospital's policies and processes pertaining to hiring and firing, the attorneys representing Howard were designated as independent monitors. The news sent a wave of relief through Howard. However, his day was far from over. Constant coughed behind him. She finally opened her eyes wide and clear for the first time. And he turned to watch. She cracked a faint smile. She had returned. Constant was back with him after all. It seemed like the ideal conclusion. After watching the stories above, do you have any thoughts? Feel free to share your opinions in the comments section. If you enjoyed our video, please like, subscribe, and share our channel. That all about today's stories. See you next time.